All right, so in this video, we're going to look at how to create summary tables of our categorical variables, so frequency tables. So the way that we uh, find these is under the stat tab, and then we go to the tables menu. Now, there's two options on here that we can use if we're doing an individual variable, then we want this top option. We'll come back to this cross tab option, which is another name for a two-way table. So if we want to create a table that contains more than one variable, um, that's the option that we wanna use. We're not gonna actually conduct the chi-squared test that's for later on. We'll put that in a different video, but just to make the table, we'll use this option. But for right now, let's start with the individual variable tables. And again, we get this dialog box that opens. It's similar to other mini tab features. And what we're going to select on, um, since gender is very simple, we're going to select on nationality. Uh, double click on it in order to select it. Or again, you could just type in C3, the column name, um, into the box, and that will also work. Now, you can display um, any of these four options. The raw counts, which is your standard frequency table. If you select percents, those are relative frequencies. So it will take your counts, it'll calculate the total, and then it'll divide all your counts by the total in order to convert them to percentages of the whole. You can select cumulative counts uh, if you want a cumulative frequency table, or the cumulative percentages, that's the cumulative relative frequency table. Now for this, I'm just gonna select all of them so that we can see the outcome of all of the options. But normally you would select maybe one or two of these uh, for summarizing. Uh, usually you don't, particularly if you're presenting a paper or something like that, you don't need all of them. Um, but different contexts uh, prefer different things and we're just gonna look at all of them. Uh, there's not a lot of other choices. You can select the store results as an option, um, but it'll print to the screen for us. And so if I want to export it to Word or something like that, um, then I'll still be able to do that, even if I don't say store results. And so here is my table. Um, the nationalities, they're alphabetized. Um, it gives me the counts. The counts are converted to percentages, the cumulative count, and the cumulative percentage. And as of course, the total and the cumulative total count should be the same, and the percent, the final percent in the cumulative frequency column should be 100%. Okay, so that's the one-way table uh, with all of our different options. Um, now, what we can do then, of course, um, you can print these, you can copy it, uh, you can send to Word, things like that. Same options we had mostly for the graphing options. Now, if I wanted to do a two-way table, then what I want to do is I want to use, under that ta same tables option, I want to use the cross tab option. Again, this is from based on raw data, and I want to specify what I want to put in the rows and what I want to put in the columns. Now, you can do it either way. Um, if you have a lot of columns, a lot of data in one of your variables, and you put that in the columns, you're going to get a really long table. Um, whereas if you want it to be more vertical, then you can actually... Um, put the, lar the one with the larger options in the rows so that they'll go this way. Um, they'll go up and down. And then the, the column width will be relatively narrow. You'll have one column for men, one column for women in the case of gender. And as with the previous one, um, you can display counts or rows or percentages or total percents. These are the same four options we had before. In a two-way table, um, displaying lots of different options can really make the table look very busy and very, very difficult to interpret. And so particularly for the two-way table, I would say pick 
one of them. Don't pick all four of them like we did in the last case. Now, the chi-square and other statistics options, we're not going to mess around with here because all we're doing is creating a table to summarize our data with. We are not doing any of these statistical tests in this video. And so hit OK. And so this is our, again, uh, female, male, all uh, by, again, alphabetized by country name. Now, if you want to see what it looks like the other way, I actually did this earlier. Um, if you put the uh, nationalities in the column headers, again, it gets very wide. And so what Minitab did is it automatically wrapped around uh, because otherwise it would be very, very, very long. And to get that onto like a Word document or something, uh, you'd have to make the print so small that it would be basically impossible to read. So it broke it so that the top and the bottom columns are about the same. Um, but the columns are now the nations instead of the other way around. Um, and you see all the totals for each of the males and females is all the same here. So there's this version or there's this version. Um, and again, generally in terms of like pagination, um, you know, you, you can you can choose what you prefer, um, but when you have a lot of categories, generally putting those many, many categories in the rows gives you a, a easier to read more compact table than putting them in the columns. Um, if you If they both have a lot of categories, there's not really much you can do. Uh, and if they don't have, uh, if neither one of them have a lot of categories, then it doesn't really make any difference. But if one of them is much more outsized than the other, then that is something to think about. Um, and you can always try it this way and then try it the other way and see uh, which one works better for you.